Hello, my name is Kevin Hind and in this presentation we're going to look at the impact of a price rise on a perfect complement. What we're going to do is present a, a problem, hopefully a realistic problem. We're going to look at the income and substitution effects of the price change. Indeed, what we'll see is that there is a zero substitution effect from the, a price change in a perfect complement. And also we're going to derive the demand curve and what we'll uh, show is that there is a difference between the Marshallian demand curve and the Hicksian demand curve. Okay, so on with the presentation. Here's our question. We've got Priyanka is a pensioner who lives alone and values being warm. Now that means that she will only consume energy in fixed proportions with other goods. If the price of energy rises, explain the income and substitution effects that Priyanka faces. And can the government do anything to help Priyanka? So I've set a question here which is um, a little bit hopefully more realistic. We've got Priyanka as a pensioner. Pensioners usually have low incomes. Not all pensioners are on low incomes. But what's quite interesting about it is that when we see the impact of the, the price change, we'll note that there is zero substitution because Priyanka as a pensioner likes to be warm, doesn't want to be cold. And... Uh, if she's on a particular income level, she'll have zero substitution between energy consumption and other goods. And that contrasts, say, with younger people, maybe on, the, on exactly the same income, who would have what's called a diminishing marginal rate of substitution of energy for other goods. So here we've got our question. It's a, a more realistic, I hope. We're seeing that the goods are consumed in fixed proportions, which really means they're perfect complements. I could have used cheese and crackers as my example. Or, but we're hopefully that you'll get some idea of what the implications are of this situation through this particular type of example. So let's start or continue by looking at uh, an indifference curve diagram and show uh, Priyanka's uh, consumption of uh, energy and other goods. So here we have our indifference curve analysis. We're showing how uh, Priyanka chooses between other goods, which we're calling Y, they're a composite index. All of the goods can be lumped together in some form of composite index. So that we can just examine this one commodity and the impact of the price change. In this case, the, the, the particular commodity is energy. And we see uh, from uh, Priyanka's indifference curves, that they're L-shaped, indicating that they're perfect complements. She has zero substitutability between other goods and energy. She always consumes energy and other goods in these fixed proportions. What that implies, of course, if you look at the to the right of A, that the marginal rate of substitution of energy for other goods is zero, whereas the marginal rate of substitution of energy for other goods vertically from A is inf infinite. Here, she's maximising her satisfaction. Uh, given the income that she has and the pr relative prices of energy and other goods. She's consuming at A, so there's her indifference curve, and here's her budget constraint, A, B, 1, and that, of course, reflects um, not only the level of income but the relative prices uh, of both energy and other goods. We can see here that she consumes QY1 other goods and QE1 energy. So what will happen if the price of energy rises? Well, if the price of energy rises, clearly, and other goods remain the same in price, um, then at the extreme, whereas before she could buy B1 energy units, now because of the price rise, she can only buy B2 energy units. Remember that she's got L-shaped indifference curves. So effectively, her new equilibrium is at point B, where she's consuming less other goods and less energy overall. And we'll look at that in a moment, what's been going on with that. So, But this is her new equilibrium, where the new indifference curve, U2, is tangential to the budget line A, B2, reflecting the new higher prices of energy. So she's consuming less energy and indeed less other goods in this particular case. She's moved from 
an equilibrium point at A to an equi equilibrium point at B. But again, she's got zero substitutability between energy and other goods. She always consumes energy and other goods in these fixed proportions. So that would clearly be indicative of a total, the, the total price effect um, of a, a change or rising the price of energy in this case. So that, that we could show that, and we will show that, as a, a normal Marshallian demand curve in a moment. But what's quite interesting is that in the economics literature is the fact that we can explore both the substitution effect, which represents the psychological response of the consumer, which that comes about because of the change in the relative prices of the goods. So how would Priyanka change her consumption, if at all, um, if we put her back on her old level of satisfaction, on her old indifference curve, with the new rel relative prices? And that would be a, we would sort of evaluate her psychological response to that. And then the other impact is not the, whereas we've just looked at the substitution effect, which is the change in the relative prices, there's also the income effect of a price change because um, here, as prices rise, clearly you have less income uh, to spend your money on, those, on commodities. So, what one ought to also look at as the price the relative prices change what what is the income effect what's the effect on real income for the consumer and that's the income effect so we're going to explore the income and substitution effects of the price change and the way that we do that in the Hicksian method is to say look the line a b2 indicates new relative prices um they were the prices were A B one, but now the prices were given by the, the slope of the budget line A B two. So we've got new higher price of energy. Now, if we could use that new higher price of energy and see how this consumer Priyanka would have reacted if we put a back on a rolled indifference curve, how would how would she behave? In order to do this, we must compensate Priyanka. And that's part of the, the trick. We're trying to keep our real income co constant here to just ex examine the substitution effect. We're isolating the income effect, keeping real income constant to explore the, the psychological response of the price change, the change in the relative prices. So how do we do that? Well, here's our, as we just said, A, B, 2 represents the new relative prices. It's got a particular slope. And if you can see the line, the dashed line A prime B3, that's got the same slope as A B2. In other words, it's got the same relative prices. It's got the new price of energy, and obviously there's the same price of other goods because the price of other goods haven't changed. And we're saying, look, if we could give some money income, because clearly the line A prime B3 represents a, a shift in the budget constraint, if you think about it, but it's a hypothetical shift. If we could compensate Priyanka, so that she had more uh, money income, keep her real income constant, that is keep the relative prices constant, and put her back so that she was um, you know, on her old indifference curve, how would she behave? How would she have behaved relative to the other situation she was in when she was on the line, the budget line A, B, 1? Well, in fact, we see that Priyanka wouldn't change anything at all. She, she's got a zero substitution effect. So what we see is a, an income effect from the price change. The total price effect is from A to B. There is a zero substitution effect, that is we're only at A. Therefore the rest of the price change is made up of income effect. So what you get is a uh, a, f a fall in real income because of the the price change and that affects both the consumption of both commodities so you want to ask yourself what could the government do well in the in this particular case what they could do is they could for priyanka give her some money income that would offset any uh, impact from the price change for this particular consumer uh, so, and we do know actually in the United Kingdom that there are 
uh, grants available, money given out to elderly people in order to help them uh, pay for their energy bills. There are fixed amounts of money. The big difficulty, of course, is distinguishing which uh, consumer should really get um, the subsidy concerned. So here we have a, a situation. We know uh, with Priyanka that any price change only impacts on her real income. She's not going to be induced to substitute energy for other goods and therefore maybe the government could identify those individuals like Priyanka and offer them a subsidy but there are costs to that of course. So for a consumer who consumes goods in fixed proportions the only impact of a price change is via the income effect. So what that means is um, when we look at the Hicksian demand curve that particular demand curve is vertical reflecting the fact that there's zero substitutability. So let's have a quick look at that, how we would derive that. So here in the top diagram we have exactly the same as we had before, um, the previous diagram. Initial equilibrium at A, where Priyanka is maximising her satisfaction on U1 given the uh, income and relative prices of other goods and energy given her money income that she has and the energy and the energy price and the other goods price of other goods so she's at a so there's the price of energy given by p1 we're at a she's consuming qe1 energy and we're just going to look at the impact on energy so we derive a demand curve for energy and in our particular case we said let's say the price of energy goes up so we're going to say let's go to bit p2 we're not quite sure sure of the consumption that's going to result so let's just that dash line straight across there and what we find is that when we get um, our new equilibrium at B we notice that uh, Priyanka consumes QE2 uh, of um, energy with the price change so in effect um, Priyanka has moved to uh, when we, when, we are, when we look at P2 and the new consumption of energy QE2, the, the next point on a demand curve is it B. So her demand curve, given the total price effect of the uh, resulting from this change in the price of energy, is the line AB. This is known as the Marshallian or uncompensated demand curve. Whereas when we start to explore the income and substitution effects and just look at the purely uh, psychological response from a price change that is the change in the rel the change in consumption due to the change in the relative prices of energy and other goods well when we isolate the income effect the, the impact of real income what happens is we find that uh, Priyanka has zero substitutability so when the prices goes up from P1 to P2 the the only impact is an income effect, which we've seen already, resulting from the, the price change, leading to lower consumption of both energy and other goods. But in fact, there is because Priyanka consumes in fixed proportions, um, what happens is that the, the substitution effect is zero. So ultimately, the Hicksian demand curve, after we've tried to compensate Priyanka for... Um, giving her money income to try and compensate for the change in real income, keeping the real income constant because that line A prime B3 has got the same relative prices, the new price of energy with the same price of other goods and that's the same slope as A B2. What that means is that uh, we have a, a vertical uh, demand curve and that vertical demand curve uh, in suggests that we have zero substitutability for um, for Priyanka when we just look at the uh, substitution effect in this particular case. So there we have it. I shall leave it there. Thanks very much.